when we get, get into that topic of aliens, you know, human intelligence, you, all you need to do is go scuba dive a, right. a coral reef. There are, is such a diversity of non-human intelligence there. And, and I don't know if you've met Avi Loeb. He's the, he's a great guy and I like the way he thinks. He says, hey, uh, here you are, here we are. The universe is 14 billion years old. The earth is 4.6 billion years old. And why, why would, if life has evolved here, so we know it's a property of the universe, why would an intelligent life have evolved elsewhere? And, and we see it here, all sorts of non-human intelligence on a coral reef and elsewhere. In the, in the, mm -hmm. I, I went diving in the Galapagos for one, and that's, that's remarkable. So why, uh, why not elsewhere? And I think that's, that's something that resonates with me, that argument. It makes mm. a lot of sense. In fact, he likes to say, why would it be extraordinary to say there's intelligent life elsewhere? It'd be extraordinary if it weren't. Right. Yeah. Also, the deeper you get in our oceans, the more alien. Oh my God. The things look. Yeah, so I love this because uh, this this ocean exploration program at NOAA. That's what they do. They go down with a six thousand meter rated ROV, and they're constantly exploring and looking for new species, and they're finding them. We are finding new species every year, and they're they're just bizarre. <laughs> I mean, they are they are absolutely alien looking. I mean, I honestly, Hollywood hasn't dreamed up stuff as weird as what we see in the sea mm. yeah yeah how deep do those vents get those those thermal vents how deep are those well uh they're over at least well some are four thousand meters mm. or more right. uh, they're different ones um, right but ultimately that that life on some of those is very weird because they're chemosynthetic and th so they're not like us they're not they're using uh i, I forgot the different chemicals but they're not necessarily oxygen they're not oxygen breathing they, they, they derive their energy differently. Mm. And that's a good sign of how weird it must be on yeah. other planets too. Yeah. And also, if, if you want to talk about other planets, I think most of the, of the planets that we're aware of that exist in like a Goldilocks zone that are able to inhabit life are water worlds. So far, you know, I, I don't think we've been able to characterize the exoplanets that are outside the solar system. Mm -hmm. But we do know that the moons of, I think there's, Europa and Enceladus uh, for Saturn and Jupiter. I for forgot which one's yeah. which. Yeah. Oh, they're, the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're both ice covered and they have they have liquid underneath. Mm. And so NASA has actually been funding our ocean exploration program, NOAA's, for that purpose to develop the engineering methods to basically put a a deep diving ROV on a probe that can land on the surface, drill through the ice, and then go explore the the under uh, under the ice oceans of those two uh yeah interesting huh wow that is fascinating yeah and, and I, you, we're making so so many rapid advances in commercial space and you look how easy it is to get into space now with with what spacex has provided yeah that we might we might see that in our lifetime i want to know why we haven't gone back to the moon that's interesting well obviously you could see it's hard and i think it's mostly because the government is uh big and and slow and we've just burned ourselves with bureaucracy and i'm pretty much happy with some of the things the yeah. current president's doing but they keep so, pushing it back every single year well but again i think i think commercial commercial space industry is gonna mm -hmm. it's gonna they're gonna they're gonna do it mm -hmm. and in fact we already had uh we had i forgot what was the company that just put a probe on the moon mm -hmm. um it, this is this is gonna happen it's gonna explode in the next decade of commercial companies going out there china's doing it by the way so to the, to the moon yeah yeah, yeah. so hopefully uh, we can get this artemis program on on step uh yeah but i it's fr it's frustrating for those of us who want to see more space exploration yeah it definitely it's definitely strange it's what it's like the only the, the apollo program is the only technolo technological program ever developed by any country or company that has not grown at all or not grown exponentially since it was conceived of. Yeah, that's right. Like thing. look at every other thing, look at every other technological advancement in the history of man, like whether it be war tech or consumer tech, it's all, if you compare it to what it was in the seventies, it's all like, look at the, look at the phone. You yeah. Know? So I, I, did you ever have anyone on your show who said that the whole moon mission was uh, a fabrication? Yeah. Mark yeah. Cybrell, I've had that's him on. That's it. Yeah. 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 So are you convinced? Um, I think if I had a gun to my head, I would say it was it was faked. Would you? Yeah. I, I don't know. I think I, th I think it's complicated. I think that it's possible that also 
if they did make it, if they did go, I think they probably had a backup plan, like a back, like backup footage yeah. of it. Or like even if they did go, maybe they weren't able to get the cameras and the film through the radiation belt, right? It could have been destroyed by the radiation. So it's like we went, but how do we prove it? Well, we let's get the soundstage and let's record some stuff and and make it look like we went. Yeah, you know, there's just so many questions and like the way like I I, I have people come on here all the time and tell me completely obscene like crazy outlandish things that they they come with evidence for and it seems compelling and reasonable and then i'll have somebody come in and then completely show me how that's all f full you know complete mm -hmm. bullshit yeah. and, and 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 preposterous and with counter evidence but the moon one is one that i haven't seen any plausible counter evidence or hard evidence to refute what like the skeptics oh, say okay so like until I can get an Apollo astronaut on here to like debate him, I don't know. I'm still up in the air with it. I, I don't know. Hmm. It's funny because I lean towards it happened, mm -hmm. but the more the, I get into this UAP topic and the government cover up, mm -hmm. the more I'm inclined to believe almost anything in terms of the government fabricating a story. Yeah, right. The problem and because with, there's all this national interest for for doing so. We wouldn't want the Russians to make us th think that we weren't right. ahead of them. Right. There, there's a ton of reason to do that. And the more I watch the government and having played in it at the high level I was at NOAA, mm -hmm. I see how that spin doctoring occurs every day. Right. And and uh, and it's a fine line between what is promoting American greatness versus what's lying about right. lying about sure. what we're really doing. Sure. It's, there's yeah. there's there's big questions, man. I mean, it, it's uh for one thing, there's so much stigma attached to questioning the moon landing. You're you're automatically a fool if you if you or you're un-American completely. Yeah. And uh, the other thing about it is that time, smack dab in the middle of the Cold War, when the American government, when JFK was killed, when we were doing MK Ultra experiments with drugs on yeah. people yeah. to to do mind control, and Watergate, I mean, you name it. We were doing more, the, the US government and intelligence agencies were were doing more deception and lying to the American people than ever before I mean, in recorded history. Very good point. And the moon landing happened right in the middle of it. So yeah. is that the only thing that they did that was legit? I, I mean, yeah, there's a pretty <laughs> strong record of lying to the public right there. You yeah. Just, you just brought up. Totally. Yeah. Wow. So, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. I would love to, uh, and then <laughs> the other was day it? I watched this crazy documentary called uh, Room uh 237 i think it's called by stan it's a it's a documentary all about the uh um the hidden easter eggs inside of the shining movie what because okay so this is crazy so we're, we're addicts of that movie by the way my uh, family yeah. oh really yeah. so room 237 is a documentary about the shining and stanley kubrick ha uh allegedly implemented some some hidden messages in that movie really? so these people that made this documentary i think for sure uh they're making connections that don't exist they're going way too far with it but there are maybe 25 to 30 percent of the things in that documentary that i think are totally legit ah. for instance there's this shot so room 237 basically in that in that movie that's what they call the moon room so all this stuff happens in that room that doesn't happen anywhere else. It's 237, which was in the 70s and uh, the seventies and 80s. We thought it was exactly 237,000 miles to the moon. Mm. Since then, we've gotten, we've developed better sensing equipment to, to figure out it's like 900 more miles than that. We were like a thousand miles off. Um, and then there's also the thing like the, pre the the manager of the hotel looks just like John F. Kennedy in that movie. Oh, um, there's weird sort of inconsistencies with the continuity in that movie where there's like obvious things where the carpet pattern changes from one shot to the other and other things disappear. And like he's arguing with his wife about, don't you know about contracts? Don't you know about secrecy? I can't. You ha like he's he's fighting with his wife about yeah. living these two separate lives, and what they're speculating is that Stanley Kubrick's using this as like uh, he's using that movie to like sort of like tell people what really happened. And there's also a famous photo that you can find if you dig hard enough, Steve. Um, I was showing this to uh, Rogan the other day of Stanley Kubrick on the set of 2001: A Space Odyssey, walking between the sound stages in Europe, and Jolly West is behind him. Walking behind him, Jolly West is Jolly West is the uh, the CIA guy who was uh, a part of MK Ultra. Oh, 
Right. He was a he was I think he was a a psychologist, a CIA psychologist. I could be wrong, but he was doing he was doing stuff with drugs. He was basically oh yes he was he was a part of the whole MK Ultra thing. Find out what his actual title was. I don't want to mess it up. But he he was there for MK Ultra, and he was there. Uh, he was the guy who interviewed Jack Ruby. Oh right, right before he had the psychotic break. Mm -hmm. So um, Jolly West is uh, a a very scary person. Interesting. Who was involved right. in a lot of the most like deceptive things that ever happened. Uh, no, that's not it, no. Steve. Um, Jamie found it in five minutes, Steve. Come on. <laughs> you can do it.